everybody, Jeremy Blum here with another episode of Tech Bits. Um, this week I'm going to be talking a little bit about video card specifications and um, what you got to look at to make sure you select the video card that's going to work for your particular setup. Um, before I get into that though, first of all, running Windows 7, I have it triple booting with my Ubuntu and uh, Windows Vista. If you haven't tried it yet, there's a public beta available. I'd highly recommend going ahead and grabbing it, installed in a virtual machine, um, or uh, go ahead and, and uh, put on another partition like I did. Um, it's really great, and I recommend checking it out. It's it's kind of fun. I like it a lot. Uh, very surprisingly stable for a beta one release. Um, so that's my little bit about that. Second thing is, yes, my shirt does say the dancing robot. Um, my girlfriend made it for me using her leap uh, sewing skills. You can notice the dancing robots on there. It's pretty awesome. So uh, I just figured I'd say that now because I'm sure I'll get questions in the comments about why there's a dancing robot on my shirt. Um, all right, so uh, onto the technical stuff, onto video card specifications and stuff. Um, this Tech Bits episode was a request made by GlideBy7, who wanted help picking out a video card for his computer, and wanted to know about the specifications a little bit. All right, so I'll just kind of you know run through the basic stuff and explain how it's going to matter for your particular computer. Um, first off, is the interface for your video card. Basically, this is going to be PCI Express Time 16 or Time 16 2.0 today. Um, you don't really see too much AGP or PCI interfaces anymore. Um, those are going to be the two things you're looking at. So just make sure your motherboard supports whatever you get. Um, however, they are backwards compatible, and since all the bandwidth isn't really being used right now, whether you get PCI Express Time 16 2.0 or 1.0 doesn't really matter quite yet. But I, I would try to go for for what your motherboard supports. Um, second thing, the chipset manufacturer. This is basically going to be ATI or NVIDIA. There are other players in this game, but um, those are the two big guys. Um, which one you choose is going to depend on if you want to go SLI or Crossfire um, immediately or in the future. Um, and then also um, the price to performance ratio. Right now, at least in my opinion, ATI is a better price to performance ratio. Um, but uh, some of NVIDIA's newer cards are a little bit higher end. Um, so, you know, that's totally up to you and your preference. That's, you know, that goes by the person. Um, next thing is the core clock. That's the most important. Um, so that's just what speed the GPU is running at. Same thing as with everything else. Um, the faster that is, the better. Uh, you'll just get better frame rates and stuff. And then you should just keep in mind that some video cards now have multiple GPUs on one card, like the GTX 295 from NVIDIA. Um, so that's kind of like SLI in one card without having to get two cards and, and bridge them together. Um, next thing is the number of stream processors. Stream processors are basically just doing parallel computing for graphics. So the more of them you have, the better parallel computing you're going to be getting, and you're going to be getting faster speeds, once again, for your video and stuff. Um, video cards now have several hundred uh, stream processors in them. Next thing is memory. So there's a couple things with memory. First off is the memory speed. Obviously, faster speeds are going to get you um, uh, faster performance, just as with uh, system memory. Next thing is um, the amount of memory. So like one gigabyte, for example, is a pretty common amount for high-end cards right now. Um, just, with system, just like with system memory, the more video memory you have, the more the GPU is going to be able to address, and you'll be getting better performance. Uh, then there's the interface that it's connecting to the video card with. So like 512 bit, for example, that's just how many bits it can transfer. Um, basically, the higher the number, the better the transfer rate, and you know, higher speeds, once again. Um, and then there is memory type. So basically, at this point, you're between GDDR3, 4, and 5, depending on whether you're with NVIDIA or ATI. ATI goes up to 5. Uh, NVIDIA's cards are still on 3. Um, GDDR5 supports up to 3.8 gigahertz for a piece of memory. Um, 3 supports only up to 1.8, neither of which have either been, really been reached yet. Um, so it's not really important yet, but it probably will be. Um, so right now, and uh, sorry, ATI has the newer technology as far as that goes. Um, next thing is um, after memory software support for APIs. So like the two big ones are uh, and, uh, Microsoft's DirectX technology or uh, OpenGL. Um, so you just want to make sure the video card has support for whatever version of that you plan on using. Um, for example, DirectX 10 in Windows Vista. Um, Next thing is the maximum resolution of the video card. Make sure that's greater than or equal to what your screen supports so that you're getting the full use out of your screen. And then there's the connector type. So this is going to depend on, on your monitor configuration and stuff. But um, basically, you've got VGA, DVI, uh, HDMI, DisplayPort, and uh, some of them have S-Video connectors also. 
Uh, DVI is the most common, that's just digital video. And then HDMI is the same as DVI, same quality, but it can uh, uh, send audio over that connector too. And this is important because some video cards actually are able to send that audio now. Some of them have built-in audio processing or uh, do it through the CPU and they, uh, through a connection to the digital uh, audio output on the, on the motherboard, they can kind of forward that sound through to the HDMI, usually using an adapter. So you might want to keep that in mind, especially for home theater sets, setups. Um, next thing is HDCP support. If you're planning on playing, playing Blu-ray discs on your computer, you're going to need this on both your monitor and your video card. Um, you need this in order to play protected high-def content like Blu-ray discs. Um, next thing is going to be the cooling type. So, you know, similar to what I talked about in last week's Tech Bits, uh, you know, passive, heat pipe, active, liquid cooling. Um, some of them have liquid cooling blocks pre-installed. The vast majority of them have active fan coolers, which you're going to need because video cards get really hot, hotter than CPUs. Um, and then the, the next thing, one of the things I get the most questions about is uh, the power requirements for the card. So, um, first of all, you need to look at what connectors it takes, um, whether it takes six or eight pin um, PCI Express power connectors or both or neither. Um, and you want to make sure you, you have those connectors and if not, that you get an adapter. Um, and then you want to make sure the wattage and amperage requirements are met. Um, you got to check the rails on your power supply and make sure that the 12 volt rail is going to supply enough for your video card. Um, and then the last thing, something that's actually commonly overlooked, is the actual size of the card. Some of these cards are huge. Um, so you want to make sure, especially in a, uh, let's say a mid-tower case, um, that the video card is going to fit. Some of the newer ones are 10 and a half inches long, and they just barely fit in those cases, if at all. Um, so you're going to want to measure that beforehand. And then on to some of the last stuff, um, obviously how much you're willing to spend. Like I said at the beginning, I think ATI is a slightly better price to performance ratio at this point. And then something else to consider is get one card now and get another one later and put them in SLI or Crossfire. Um, you might also want to consider the manufacturer. I personally prefer uh, EVGA for my video cards. I think they do a great job. They have really good customer service and they have this great 90 day step up program for upgrading um, your video card within 90 days of purchase. Um, but that's just me. I mean, there are other great companies. Uh, XFX is also a great company. Um, Asus makes pretty good video cards. You know, there's a, there's a whole bunch. Um, basically, just look at their reviews. Um, another thing, when you're choosing your video card, you want to make sure you're avoiding a bottleneck. So, like, don't go ahead and get a super high-end Extreme Edition quad-core processor and then get, like, a 68, an NVIDIA 6800 video card. You're going to get a huge bottleneck there. You want to make sure that your, your CPU, RAM, and a video card are all kind of on the same level. Uh, otherwise, you are going to get a bottleneck in your system. Same thing go goes the other way around. If you think you're going to be only playing games and you don't need your CPU that much, it's not really true. Um, you can't just go out and get like, you know, a super high-end new ATI um, video card and then go with like an Athlon 64 processor. It's just not really going to work out right. Um, and then the very last thing is just. Um, this is not really too commonly an issue, but consumer versus workstation cards. There are some workstation cards that are extremely powerful and expensive, but they're designed specifically um, for parallel processing for things like Photoshop uh, and that kind of stuff. If you're a gamer, just because th these are more expensive doesn't mean that the, they're what you want. So don't go ahead and uh, accidentally buy those by accident. An example is uh, the Quattro cards by uh, NVIDIA. You're going to want the uh, gaming-oriented ones. All right, so um, that's basically it for video cards. If you have any questions, feel free to post them, send me a message, post them on ultimatecomputers.net, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm always reachable. Um, all right, so that's it for this week. Let me know if you have suggestions for future episodes of Tech Bits, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.